Hi there everyone, it's Mr. Sinti and this video is about connective tissue. Connective tissue is one of four types of tissues that make up the human body and one of the things about connective tissue is that it's incredibly diverse. It has uh, so many different functions that it's difficult to really discuss it. Um, so, but what's fascinating about it is that there's so many types um, it makes it an interesting tissue to uh, consider. And so let's jump right into that conversation. And so one of the things about connective tissue, uh, the name sort of implies it, is that it functions to connect or bind other tissues together. And so I thought I'd start off with sort of the ankle right here, which is the, the union or the joint between the tibia, fibula, and the foot and this big heel is called the calcaneus. And what's interesting about bones, bone is a type of connective tissue, but bones, when they come together, when they meet each other, I mean, what's holding them together? You might have not have thought about that before, but in fact, there's a type of connective tissue called a ligament, and I'm sort of highlighting it here in white. So a ligament is a type of connective tissue that holds bone to other bones. But where bones come together and they meet up, there's cartilage between them. Cartilage is also a connective tissue. And so that helps when the bones come together uh, to a, at a point, it's, this type of cartilage is called articular cartilage. And then you have muscle. Now muscle isn't connective tissue, but as muscle connects to a bone, it's connective tissue. So you may know this already, but this white tissue right here where the muscle connects to the bone is called a tendon right there and this is actually one of the the most famous tendons of the whole body which is called the uh, Achilles tendon um, or calcaneus tendon um, so we have tendons ligaments bone cartilage all of these are types of connective tissue and we're going to learn there's even more still so let's continue this so one of the things about connective tissue, since it's incredibly diverse, we always like to consider what are the things that are that is common between all these different types. And so maybe we, if we can identify that, then we can have something to hold our hat on, and then we can look at the differences uh, between them. So one of the things that I want to point out about that's consistent with all connective tissue is that as, if you can see, these are cells right here, these purple structures, and this pink area is the material between the cells. And so notice some about connective tissue is that this, the population of cells are sort of scattered. Now that's in contrast with epithelial tissue where the cells are very close together, tightly packed and adjacent. There's, if you will, this is an important term. Let me, whoops, this is an important term. I'm going to highlight it here. There's a lot of extracellular matrix. And that's all of this material in between cells. So if I had a cell like this and another cell like that, and, and all the material in between, let me go red here, is extracellular material. You know, now what is it? Well, that's part of our discussion today. It could be liquid, it could be sort of gelatin in material, or it could be actually rather rigid in the case of bone. So we're going to consider that. But that's something in common between all connective tissue. Cells are kind of scattered, and there's a lot of extra, meaning on the outside, cellular matrix, which is a generic term, meaning sort of the, the inner space, if you will. And so the matrix generally consists of fibers of often protein, but there can be some carbohydrate. And in the case of blood, which is connective tissue, the matrix is called the plasma, and that's very aqueous, very watery some proteins in there and the sugars, amino acid, hormones, a lot of stuff. Um, so in this case, you're looking at the femur here. This is the knee, if you don't recognize it. This is the femur, which is coming down. This is the distal part of the femur, meaning the furthest part away from the core of the body. And here's the articular cartilage that surrounds the femur um, at the knee joint. The joint means where the two bones come together. This is the big shin bone called tibia, and this is the fibula. Now there's a lot of 
there's a lot of connective tissue at the knee. So there's articular cartilage, there's the bone, there's the meniscus, which is a C-shaped pad of cartilage. And then of course, many ligaments on the knee that hold these bones all together. And so that, that's kind of an interesting structure. So connective tissue, unlike again, unlike the epithelial tissue, uh, has a, an, an abundant amount of matrix, meaning there's a lot of stuff going on between the cells. And so generally, this is a picture of the skin here. And you can see, let me sort of highlight a couple things. This upper area of the skin is called the epidermis, and this is the dermis. Now, the epidermis is comprised of stratified squamous epithelial tissue, and you can see it's sort of pink in coloration. But right below that is the dermis, and this is composed of mostly loose connective tissue. And one of the things about connective tissue is that it has, although you can't see it so well in this diagram, but it has a great blood supply. And so that means the cells have a lot of nutrients and they're thriving. Whereas here in the epidermis, the cells are away from the blood and they actually end up dying, but that's okay because it forms a protective barrier. Now, the huge exception to the rule of good blood supply for connective tissue is cartilage. Cartilage has a very poor blood supply and therefore when it's torn or um, injured in any way, it's extremely slow to heal. And so there, and, uh, a physician that specializes in connective tissues, an orthopedic uh, physician, and you, oftentimes if there's cartilage damage, um, there's, there's difficulty and the, the patient isn't going to get better very quickly. <laughs> Whereas ironically, when bone is broken, when there's trauma to the bone, the bone actually heals rather quickly because bone has a tremendous blood supply. And so one of the things about connective tissue, I just wanted to highlight a couple of the important cells that are found in connective tissue. And so this cell that is, this is a beautiful photograph here of fibroblast cells taken with a fluorescent microscope. Now you can see the nuclei are shown here in blue and all of these threads inside are proteins and then the membrane looks like it's highlighted in red here. Now notice the black area is the extracellular matrix. Now a fibroblast cell is kind of common and what's interesting about it is it's highly secretory in terms of protein. So these proteins that are inside can get secreted and so you'll find that there's a lot of protein fibers in the extracellular matrix. And you're like, well, what, what, are, what do you mean? What protein fibers? Um, I will mention this a little bit later, but it's a protein called collagen is the main protein. There's others as well. But the cells are kind of star-shaped. Now, this is an, an incredible photograph, but if I went back here and said, you know, look here at this connective tissue, all you can really see, I, it's all I can see, are these little purple dots. And that's the nucleus right here of a fibroblast cell. So these are a bunch of fibroblast cells here in the skin. And everywhere there's not a cell is protein. So I don't know if you, if you knew this sort of superficially that you're like, oh, the skin has a lot of protein. So your skin has a lot of collagen in it. And that's true. And it's these fibroblast cells that are producing it in the dermis. Now, also sort of meandering or wandering through connective tissue is a blood cell. It happens to be a white blood cell, sometimes called a leukocyte. And these white blood cells, you may know this, this big guy is a big eater. It's a macrophage, big eater. And that goes around in the connective tissue looking for germs. And if it sees something that it doesn't like, it's going to engulf it. And I don't know if I can animate that without it being a little ridiculous, but it reaches out its cell membrane and it's able to engulf when the cell membranes fuse together and form sort of a food vacuole. And then that's broken down within the white blood cells lysosome. So it's not technically a, you know, when you're considering cell types of connective tissue, normally you would think of a, a white blood cell, like for example, this monocyte as 
a, bl a type of blood cell, but it is blood is connective tissue, and so therefore I can I can sort of discuss it this way. Here's here's the macrophage in the blood. These little faint cells in the background are red blood cells. These little purple guys right there are platelets. Everywhere you don't see a cell is the matrix. So in blood, the matrix is called plasma. So if you took blood and you drew it out of your body, it would look red, obviously. So it would look like this in a test tube. You're like, ooh, look, I have blood. But then if you spun it in a centrifuge or just let it sit there for a while, gravity will have the red blood cells fall to the bottom because they're most dense. You might be wondering how can these little guys be most dense is because they contain iron, Fe. And iron inside the hemoglobin makes them dense. And so everywhere in between is plasma. And plasma tends to be on the top like that. And so it's approximately 50-50. Now, dissolved in the plasma, dissolved in here are all kinds of things, sugar, hormones, proteins, etc. You're like, well, hey, what about the white blood cells? There's not as many white blood cells, and if I make them green, there's a little white layer like this in the blood as well. And so there you, there you have it. And so macrophages, fibroblast cells, and then I want to highlight this cell. This is a fairly important one as well that sort of hangs out in connective tissue. It's called a mast cell, mast cell. And it's often adjacent to a blood vessel. Now, that's indicative of something of the functionality of the mast cell, that it's located near a blood vessel. And so one of the things about a blood vessel is that it's the trans transportation system of white blood cells. White blood cells can actually leave the bloodstream. They can actually exit through capillaries, and that's how they get into um, the other connective tissues. What's interesting about that is these mast cells secrete a chemical called histamine. You may have heard of this before. They secrete hist These are real cells here, and this is a cartoon drawing of it. They release a chemical called hist histamine, and the histamine increases or promotes inflammation, which causes those capillaries to dilate and then, therefore, more fluid exits the blood vessel. Therefore, more white blood cells exit the blood stream and go into the connective tissue to fight off the germs. So if there's an inflammation, if you've ever had like on your finger, like a swollen red, and it's like, ooh, it kind of hurts and it's puffy. It's like it's inflamed, fiery red hot. That means that mast cells are hard at work fighting an infection. And so there's... They also secrete, if that's not enough, they also secrete a chemical called heparin, which is an anticoagulate. More on this to come in the future when we would discuss blood, but this prevents blood from clotting. You might think, you know, well, you know, is this good or not good? I, I want my blood to clot sometimes when there's a cut, but I don't want it to clot most of the time. So it's it's very important. It's not only important to maintain that balance in our own body, but uh, physicians use heparin, surgeons use heparin a lot in, uh, in, in surgery uh, so that the blood isn't clotting during the procedure. That's, that's important. So uh, let's talk about these proteins that are found in, the, in uh, the extracellular matrix. There's three main kinds. There's collagen fibers, elastic fibers, and reticular fibers. And they're sort of in that order going from thick to thin. So an analogy would be if you had like a huge, thick rope, very, very hard, that would be collagen. If you had some thread, sort of elastic thread, you would have elastic fibers, and some very, very fine thread would be reticular fibers. And so depending on the ratio of these, your connective tissue can be very rigid, it could be very strong, not very elastic, okay, that would be collagen, or it could be extremely flexible if, and have a lot of elastic fibers in it uh, and reticular fibers. And so collagen fibers are made up of the protein collagen. Collagen could possibly be the most abundant protein in the body, so it's certainly a name to recall. 
it's not very elastic. Um, you'd, you would find it um, in connective tissue, and I'll come back to this in a moment. Elastic fiber uh, is made up of a protein called elastin, and it's extremely rubbery and flexible, and so that's useful. And then reticular fibers are the most thin of all, and they're highly branched, and they're sort of like little threads that you would sew uh, a tear in your shirt with, and they help to uh, at attach connective tissue to adjacent tissue. So under the microscope, under the light microscope, I should say, collagen fibers, depending on the stain, and it's a little difficult, that's why it, it, in order to really get into tissues or the study of histology, you've got to got to go strong with the microscope. You can't just look at one or two pictures. You have to look at a lot of examples. Also on the internet, there's many examples. I would recommend this after watching this video. I would simply call up collagen fibers or elastic fibers, reticular fibers, um, perhaps in a search engine, and then look at images of these. And then after a bunch of images, you might come to a better understanding of it. I don't want to totally populate this video with <laughs> with hundreds of, of images, so I've, I just chose a few of them. So collagen fibers are these pink lines in between the the dark purple. The dark purple is the nucleus of the fibroblast cells, and so this is collagen in the matrix. Now, elastic fibers tend to stain a little darker, and, and that, that is a characteristic of elastin protein, that it really picks up the dye. Eh, you can go with that in terms of if you're looking at this, you're like, hmm, I think there's a lot of elastin in here. Kind of reminds me of a Van Gogh, <laughs> a little bit. Uh, painting and then these re uh, reticular fibers are really 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 thin and so they're all branched out anywhere you see a line and so you know what's the big deal well they range in terms of uh, flexibility and elasticity and so it depends on what you want from your tissue and so like this picture it kind of has a lot of different things and it's not labeled but this big pink protein right there is of course thick so it must be collagen Okay. And then these kind of thinner elastic fibers, C, would be elastin. And these very thin ones, D, would be reticular fibers. And then A isn't a protein at all, but rather it's the nucleus of a fibroblast cell. So many kinds of connective tissue. So if I were to list them, they're loose connective tissue, fibrous connective tissue, adipose tissue, there's cartilage, bone, and blood. And you're like, whoa, you know, the, how can all of these things be connective tissue? They, well, the characteristic is that the cells are kind of scattered, a lot of extracellular matrix. And so this is the commonality. And you're like, well, you know, who, who came up with that? Well, there, there's epithelial tissue and then there's all of these connective tissues, which often bind other tissues together. But, and then there's muscle. So muscle is very different than connective tissue. And then there's nerve. So you have, these are your four tissues. So I don't know I, 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 if I have to say anything more about this other than connective tissue, sort of like the, just the bend that everything gets thrown into a little bit. But that being said, each of these types of connective tissues have their own unique functions, and they're pretty cool. Now, uh, the knee is a great place to look. I, I've mentioned this before. There's a lot of connective tissue in the knee. So I'm going to see if I can make this a little bit larger so you can see that. So check this out. Now, right below the skin, we have uh, a layer of fat. Now, when I say fat, I don't... I shouldn't say that. I should say we have a layer of adipose tissue. See right in here in green, right in here, right below the skin is adipose tissue. That's a type of connective tissue. These cells were once sort of like a fibroblast cell, sort of star shape. And they have this vacuole inside of them. And when it's filled up with fat, a fat is a triglyceride. I don't want to get too biochemical on you, but I could. Triglycerides, when there's many of them, they fill up, and it's as the cell swells up, it sort of looks like this, and all the organelles are pushed to the perimeter, and so it looks like they're almost empty. So this is a great picture of fat, 
or adipose tissue. What's it doing there below the skin? It's insulating us, keeping us warm, very important. It's also cushioning us from physical trauma from the outside. It's, all, it's kind of packaging, if you will, uh, for the organs of the body. It's, it's perfectly normal to have your organs surrounded by adipose tissue. It's sort of like, think about when you're sending a package in the mail, you got all those little foam, whatever those things are, foam beads that uh, protect the, the contents of the box. It's important. And of course, the main function of adipose tissue is to store energy. So it's, it's critical. And so look at this. We also have lots of blood, not just in the knee, all over the body. Blood, as I mentioned before, has white blood cells, red blood cells. Red blood cells carry oxygen. White blood cells fight off disease. Platelets are involved in blood clotting. Then we have over here, look at this, at the end of the bone, we have cartilage right there. This is the articular cartilage at the end of the bone. Now cartilage, notice the space between the cells. They have a special kind of cell. I haven't introduced you to it yet. I think I will now. It's called a chondrocyte. It's the cells that make up cartilage. And then in the matrix, it's mostly collagen fiber. There's also a little bit of sugar in here as well. So collagen, there's actually a couple of different types of cartilage. And then notice this structure here. Do you see this? This is uh, bone um, being connected to a muscle, bone being connected to a muscle, which is a tendon. And then when bones connect to bones, it's a ligament. So both ligaments and tendons, very strong, very white in coloration, are made up of fibrous connective tissue. It's a very strong tissue. And though it looks pink here, it's actually white in appearance when you see it. I have some pictures coming up. And this white protein is collagen. This is the nucleus of the fibroblast cells. And then over here, sort of in between all the tissues, we have like below the skin, it's not being, it's not pointing to that, but we have loose connective tissue. It's kind of soft and it has well, it has all three of the fibers. It has collagen and it has a lot of elastin and reticular fibers. Here are the fibroblast cells and it might even have a few uh, migrating white blood cells that are uh, cleaning up any disease. And then bone, very interesting right here. Um, you can see it almost looks like wood. It, it's in these concentric rings and these little dark red structures are little cribs, if you will, where the, where the bone cells live. The bone cells are called osteocytes, and these little, little um, cribs are called lacuna. Same with the chondrocytes. They also live in a, a little crib called lacuna. The, the big difference between, if you're like, ah, I can't see how bone and blood would be both connective tissue. Well, what's interesting is the matrix is plasma. It's very fluid. Bone has a very, very rigid, it's the most rigid connective tissue. You're like, how come? Well, not only does it have protein in the matrix, but it has a lot of mineral salts. And you probably already knew that. You knew ahead of time that bone is infamous for storing calcium. And so these salts help it mineralize it and make it extremely rigid. Although it's not totally uh, inflexible, it's, it, it can bend and uh, it can fracture if it's really put to the test. And so this is, let me just walk you through each of the tissues more closely. This is what connective tissue looks like if you're asked to identify it. These little dots are the nucleus of the cell. I mean, I can, you know, I can draw on the cell membrane though I don't see it. This, these are the fibroblast cells like that. You're like, why is it connective tissue? Because there's a lot of extracellular matrix. You're like, what are these threads? Proteins. Which ones? And collagen, elastin are, are, are these thinner ones right there. And so usually you find loose connective tissue below the skin, like in the dermis. It helps to bind um, certain organs to other organs. Um, and so it's, 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 it's very useful this way. And the fibroblast cells, as I mentioned, are shown here in purple. And there's a lot of collagen and elastin. 
in sort of this, uh, this gel-like substance called the matrix. Sometimes the matrix is, I apologize for all the terms, it's not me, but sometimes the matrix is just simply referred as ground substance. <laughs> and uh, here's the elastin, here's the collagen fibers, and here's the nucleus of the fibroblast cells. Loose connective tissue. Another picture of loose connective tissue. And so you're like, I, I hope you're getting a sense of the fact that you're like, well, how would I know this? Well, how would you know? what someone looks like. You just sort of have to be told this is what it, this is what it is. And then you, the, your goal is to not confuse it with another tissue type. And so this is what it is. What does it do? It helps to bind the epithelial. Usually the epithelial tissue is right above this. And then there's free space. So there's free space, epithelial tissue, loose connective tissue. And so here's another picture of loose connective tissue. This happens to be a white blood cell right there. And so this macrophage is cruising along in the tissue, dominating and eliminating any bacteria that it sort of encounters. And then it, the fibroblast cells are the ones that are making the protein in the matrix. It's not there. So the fiber fibroblast cells are secreting the protein. Again, this is a great photograph, light microscope of adipose tissue. Now, add opposed to loose connective tissue, that's a small humor there, um, kind of looks like loose connective tissue, but when it's swollen with triglycerides, it tends to, the cells look kind of hollow here. And these are vacuoles, if I were to animate it like that. And inside, why am I drawing the letter E? Because triglycerides sort of look like the letter E. They're made up of a glycerol and three fatty acids. So what is the function of adipose tissue? I mentioned this before, but it's like a pad. It protects us it, uh, from trauma. It helps to keep us warm and insulate us. And it also is a great storage of fuel. So two tissues that are like best buddies in the body are muscle, and adipose tissue and you know that like for example if you've eaten a steak before and you know that there's like adipose tissue around the steak and it actually goes through it as well because when muscle burns a lot of energy it's great to have adipose tissue right next to it to draw upon it so like for example if I were to draw probably I won't be able to do this well so I apologize for this but if this is a muscle cell right here, adipose tissue would be right next to it. So when this burns energy, this is where the energy is coming. And so even if you try to cut the fat out on the side of your steak, usually the steak has fat in it nevertheless. And so there you have it. So this is a picture of adipose tissue. I think it's kind of a, one of the more straightforward types of tissues to identify. Now we have connective, fibrous connective tissue. Now fibrous connective tissue is extremely dense. It, it's dominated by collagen fibers. And the two great examples of, of fibrous connective tissue are ligaments, which connect bones to bones, and tendons, which connect muscle to bone. As you can see here, this white material connecting. So when the muscle contracts, the bone moves. Now again, the knee has a lot of ligaments. This, this kneecap right here is called the patella, and so it, it needs to be held together in the, in the fibia, fib, uh, femur and tibia and fibula are all connected with, with ligaments. And then at the end is cartilage, which I haven't talked about yet. So ligaments and tendons are made up of fibrous connective tissue, a lot of collagen. Here's, sorry for this, if this is shocking, but this is a tendon right here. It's, it's kind of white in appearance, and so when the muscle contracts, it's hel it helps to move the phalanges. We have lots of tendons all through our, our hands and our wrists. And then here you can see a ligament. This is a surgical picture here. Um, the physician is putting uh, this probe underneath and this sort of, I don't know, silky looking white material is a, is a ligament. This yellow material is the adipose tissue right below the skin. Um, you might have heard, may maybe the, the, the most famous ligament in the whole body, 
I'm not sure if this is the case, hard to say, but usually if you're participating in athletics or if you've uh, been familiar with a lot of injuries that athletes have, it's often the knee. The knee is just getting really abused uh, when you're when you're when you're really exerting yourself in, in sports and sometimes you're you're twisting the knee in places it doesn't it cannot do and there's a tear in the ligament inside it's called the uh, anterior cruciate ligament or ACL and so that's a that's a tough one and so here is under the light microscope a picture of what fibrous connective tissue looks like Again, I, I told you that it's white in appearance, but it sort of stains pink. The collagen stains pink. And so this is what it looks like. This is so you're like, what is that? That is a tendon. Or that is a ligament. That's what it looks like. Ligaments, look at this. I don't know if you've ever considered your hand like this, but it's like all of these bones, all of your carpals, this is your, um, your radius and your ulna, and this is your metacarpals and these are your phalanges so these are all sort of wrapped up by ligaments holding the bones together and then where the bones actually come together there's a little pad of cartilage in there which is uh, our next tissue so cartilage is a type of connective tissue which also has a lot of collagen fibers in it as well when i think of collagen I, i'm sorry when i think of cartilage i think of Jello. If you've ever made Jello before, you take this powder, which is mainly sugar, but it also has protein in it as well, gelatin. And so, if you take this and you heat it, which helps it dissolve into the water, so it's, it becomes really viscous. Then, when you put it into a mold, in other words, to shape it, you can put it in the refrigerator to speed up this process. It's kind of jiggly. It has. It's kind of a gel. And then here's something. Say you put little pieces of fruit, like little tangellos or, or little mandarin oranges or little pieces of pear in your jello. Those pieces of pear would be inside the gel when it solidifies. So that is what cartilage is kind of like. It's this gelatin material, white, and inside the gelatin material are the cells. And those cells are called chondrocytes. So embedded in the gel or suspended in the gel, the gel is the matrix. And the matrix is mainly protein, collagen, but a little bit of sugar as well. So it's kind of like jello. And so these chondrocytes are the ones that are making the protein. And so what's interesting about it is that it's really kind of a flexible tissue. And you want that in cartilage and to the degree that you there's three kinds of cartilage and they vary in terms of their their strength in some instances you the you want your cartilage to be very flexible like for example in your nose like this this is cartilage and also this structure right over here your pinea is made up I can, I can bend it like this is made up of cartilage but do you notice over here this is a, uh, a close-up of your backbone or your vertebrae. I happen to have a piece of it right here. Do you, I don't know if you knew this, but where the bones come together where they articulate, there's cartilage. And so this pad of cartilage right here, sometimes it's called a disc because they're, they're circular. And they're in between each of the vertebrae, these discs. Now this is a really hard piece of collagen. And you're know, like, why is that? Well, you don't want it to be as elastic as the ear. You want it to be really rigid because of all the compression that goes on from jumping and running. Think about that. I mean, you these discs are really, really strong. Sometimes they can become damaged or they could slip. And then that can be a problem. A slip disc or herniated disc can strike the, the nerve, which is the uh, spinal cord or some of the peripheral nerves that come off and that can be really problematic <laughs> maybe you've had that or you know someone who's had that we'll talk a little bit more about that in a different video though so what i want to say is that cartilage can be uh, flexible like in the nose and the ear and in, in the vertebral discs this is what cartilage looks like and so again get back to that that jello example this would be the jello and the these 
dark structures would be like the pears or peaches inside the jello. These are the chondrocytes. What is the gel? It's collagen with a little bit of sugar. And so one of the things I mentioned before is that cartilage, if it's damaged, it's really, really, really slow to heal. It doesn't have a great blood supply. So that's, that's difficult. The, the chondrocyte cells are inside these little hollow pockets. It's kind of like, uh, I don't know, it, this, this analogy may fall, fall short, sorry. It's kind of like Swiss cheese a little bit and how the, the cells uh, produce carbon dioxide and therefore uh, there's little pockets. And so these little pockets um, are the lacuna and right here, lacuna, and the chondrocyte is the name of the cell that produces the collagen. So the three kinds of cartilage that I was alluding to before are, one, hyaline cartilage. It's the most common of all the cartilage. It's white, it's found at the end of the bones. And you're like, well, I thought the ends of the bones cartilage was called articular cartilage. Nah. Articular cartilage is hyaline cartilage. Articular just means that it's at the point of the bone. Like if you if you always uh, like if you're giving a speech and you're like oh that was very articulate, I'm often uh, accused of not being very articulate, but that means that you get to the point very quickly to the point articulate. And so, where would you find hyaline cartilage other than at the ends of the bones? You, you'd find it in respiratory passages, like for example your trachea. Your trachea. This is a cross section of the trachea. Your trachea is your windpipe, and it's protected. If you if you do this with your finger and you roll it down here, your trachea, you'll notice that it feels kind of rigid. It's rigid, and then there's a space, and then there's another one, and another one, and another one. So in other words, if I were to draw it like this, the trachea comes down like this, and there's a ring of cartilage like this. And it doesn't have to go all the way around like a ring would go all the way around your finger. But rather, if there's going to be a trauma from the outside, it's only going to come from the front. It's not going to come posterior. It's going to come anterior. So the cartilage, hyaline cartilage, functions to protect the trachea. And so it's C-shaped. C-shaped. It doesn't go all the way around. And so this is kind of cool. It shows you that, that this is the free space. The first tissue in contact with the free space is, of course, not connective tissue, but epithelial tissue. And this happens to be pseudostratified ciliated columnar with lots of gar goblet cells that makes mucus, and this is where it traps the dust in your trachea. But the cartilage, hyaline, these are the chondrocytes. This is the matrix gel. So this, where I'm pointing at right here, let me go, let me go blue. That right there is cartilage, which is what this is under, under the microscope. That's what your trachea looks like. <laughs> right there, hyaline cartilage. This is, again, a, a little bit Van Gogh, is elastic cartilage. Here are the chondrocytes. Here are the lacuna that they're, they're sitting in. And the, the elastin protein tends to, to stain a little darker. And so you'd find elastic cartilage in the ears and also a little bit in your larynx, which, is, which houses your vocal cords. Now, fibrocartilage is, again, found in the vertebral discs it's a, it also in the pelvis, it, it, in the knee a little bit too. It really helps to absorb a lot of shock. And so it, it has the most collagen of all in between. And, and it stains in this particular slide blue. So you're like, if you're going color as a means of identifying your tissue, it may, it may fail you. It, sometimes it helps, sometimes it doesn't. But this is a picture of fibrocartilage. So again, let me make this suggestion. As a beginning student of tissues, and we, and you know, is there ever anyone who knows all things? No. So I would, I would suggest. Um, typing in fibrocartilage and images in search engines on the internet and take a look. Fibrocartilage is very strong. So here we go. What do you think this is? This is clearly hyaline cartilage. This is clearly elastic cartilage. Okay. So bone. 
Bone, you know, you can take x-rays of bone. See this? You can see it. And why? Because it's extremely dense. Here's your patella, your kneecap, femur, tibia, fibula. And so what's up with the bone? The bone does so many things. And of course, this isn't a video about bone. But I'll tell you this. It can make blood. It, could, it helps us move. It protects us. It helps us to, to keep the form of the body. And it stores fat. It stores uh, salt. It does so many things. It's incredible. And so it's the most rigid of the connective tissue, and that's because the matrix between the osteocytes has a lot of salt in it. And so it's, a, it's an interesting blend. If it had too much salt, then it would be kind of brittle. If it had too much protein, then it would be kind of rubbery, like, if it, like you would be gumby or something like that. But if you have the perfect blend of protein and salt, you have enough flexibility, but it's very rigid and strong, and you can, you can move and do all kinds of things. And it's fabulous. Blood is even formed inside the bone, in the red marrow inside bone. And so one of the things about bone is that it reminds me of what, what wood looks like, at least the compact bone. It's made up of these concentric circles. These little dark structures here are again, like the lacuna where the osteocytes are. And then in between the cells is collagen and mineral salts like calcium, magnesium, and phosphate ions. Those are stored there. And so these concentric rings, if you look at one and in its entirety is called an osteon. Apologize for the term, but it's sometimes called a Halvergian uh, canal as well. This little circle in the in the middle here is actually hollow there's blood vessels here and nerves which supply the cells with uh, calcium or so it's what's interesting about it is the the bone could either be it's sort of like a bank if you will and a bank not only can be a place where you store your your money but it could also be a place where you draw it out so the bone could store calcium salts if you're consuming a lot of it, or it could withdraw. Like for example, if, if you become pregnant and, you, and you're trying to create your babies, your embryo and fetus's skeletal system. And so, or if your diet is lacking calcium, the bone can contribute. And so what you do wanna do is maintain a lot of calcium in your, in your diet so that your bones are very strong. And so you don't have any difficulty. We'll come back to that point uh, in a different video. But these osteons, you can see three of them here. Sometimes they're called Halvergian. This is a person's name. They're circular. This is hollow, right in here, that black area. And then again, it looks like wood, doesn't it? And these little, little dark spots are the osteocytes, and they live in the lacuna. And then the matrix, as you notice, there's a lot of matrix between the cells, and that's where there's calcium and collagen right in here. Bone has a great blood supply because it, it, when you if it fractures, it'll repair itself. So bone is really alive. It's a real vibrant tissue. It's it's really there's a great irony in physiology in that some that somehow we have uh, equated a skeleton with with dead when in fact bone is extremely alive. And so lastly, the last connective tissue is blood. Now blood. The matrix is called the plasma. It's kind of a straw color, like hay, so slightly yellow. And what's in it, it's mainly water, but it has salts and proteins and sugars and amino acid. It's kind of the river of the body. And then we have our white blood cells and our red blood cells. Red blood cells carry oxygen, white blood cells fight off disease, and platelets help in clotting. Here's a scanning electron micrograph of red blood cells or erythrocytes. They help to carry oxygen. They're biconcave. This is a beautiful photograph of a white blood cell or a leukocyte. It helps to fight off infection. And then this is the light microscope. So you see red blood cells here. I don't see a white blood cell, but I see platelets, which are these little tiny sort of cellular fragments. I'll get more into the detail of that uh, when we discuss the blood more formally. Those are called thrombocytes. And so 
again, a, sort of a back away photograph of the blood. So here, here you can see, kind of weird, the white blood cells stain purple. So it's white blood cell, white blood cell, many red blood cells, and then the platelets. So again, two white blood cells, many red blood cells, and then the platelets, these little purple dots. Platelets help to, the blood to clot. So I hope you enjoyed this video on connective tissue, and I hope it was helpful. Thanks for watching.